Unajua ina ngapi ya kuku? Eh? Unajua ina ngapi ya kuku? Niko na najua broiders, najua rares na kienyeji. Hizo tatu. Si tatu. Mbili gani na gani? Kuna rares na kuna broiler. Najua ina tatu ya kuku. Kama gani na gani? Kienyeji, broilers na Jeda what do you call it? This is a mayai, I mean. Kienyeji ni kuku ina gani? Kienyeji ni wale kuku ambayo wana wana wanakuaga na wanapandikiswaga na jogo. Sio wale ambao wale wa mayai wakuapa tu chakula cha kigeni tu kizuri kizuri wanakuwa tofauti na kienyeji kwa sababu yule anakuta anazaa anatotoa ana mayai bila bila kupandwa na jogo. Eh ndo kukuwa kwa kienyeji aweze kutoa mayai mnono unampatia nini? Shida si juzo majakula sawa. Chakula yenye iko na protein, iko na nutrients na maybe greens on top of that. Na huu kienyeji mayai yake unadhania ni kala gani? Mayai yake yanakuwa gani orange. Orange. Na no, mayai ya kienyeji ni kala gani? Mayai yake ni yellow. Na no, nadhani kienyeji yapatikana kwenye mti gani? Eh? Kienyeji upatikana kienyeji ni ndege kweli? Eh, kienyeji ni ndege. Anapatikana kwenye mti gani? Ndege ndege kuna ndege ndege wa aina nyingi. Kuna ndege wanaeruka kwenye mti na kuna ndege wale ambao ni kuku wanayefungwa na binadamu. Broilers ni nini? Broilers ni kuku wa nyama. Broiler inakuanga ya white. Broiler ni mayai ya hayo mayai spine yanakuwa ya namna gani kwa sababu naona tu wanapandikiza kwa njia ya umeme. Broilers mayai yake ni kala gani? Mayai ya broilers inaweza kuwa white ama ikuwe some gray shivi kitukayo. Sasa jua mandani. <laughs> ah wewe eh yeye ni tricky hiyo. Jua ni kala gani? Kuna white, kuna white na kuna ingine na kwa yellow shivi. Na unadhania broiler anataga mayai ngapi kwa siku? Broilers inataga mayai mbili per day tuseme. No! Eh uh, layers ni nini? Layers layers kuna layers kuku ambao utaga mayai. Eh yeah. Na leo zutaga mayai ngapi kwa siku? Itategemea. Si itategemea venye inakula, venye umepe unga. Kama unaepe unga venye inastahili, utapata kitu kama tuseme 3 moja, 2 au 3. Itategemea. Ah, na unadhani anatagaga mayai ngapi kwa siku? One egg in a day if at most tu kulingana na the feeding mode. Unadhani hiyo layers eh? inapatikana kwenye mti gani? Layers mara nyingi inapatikana kwenye tuseme na wale watu wa, watu wanafuga layers I mean watu wanafuga kuku za nyama hivyo hivyo kitu kaiyo. Mti. Eh sina uhakika. Dia tunachukua ga kenchik ama mwoko. Kati ya broilers na kienyeji gani tam? Kienyeji ni tamu. Kwa nini? I think ni kwa sababu mostly ina feed naturally na tena yani genetic kienyeji na kienyeji ni yani it's genetic genetically yani ina interbreed ina, ina interbreed genetically My name is Dr. Harrison Kamau, a veterinary surgeon by profession. I work at Unga Farm here, East Africa Limited, and uh, I'm a regional manager for Central Region. The most common types of chicken that uh, are being kept by our farmers in this country, uh, there are mainly three. Uh, one, we have the broiler. Broiler is mainly bred genetically 
for meat production. Uh, we have the hybrid layer. This hybrid layer also is uh, bred specifically for continuous laying for almost one and a half years. And this bird produces an egg every day. Uh, and the third one is the Kenyaji, which you can uh, have the indigenous one, the one that you usually brood at home. But these days hatcheries are coming up with fast growing and better performing improved Kenyajis like the can bro from the likes of Kenji. The proper way of feeding broilers, uh, the biggest objective of the farmer is fast growth and getting the maximum weights that are uh, going to bring in maximum returns for the farmer in the shortest time possible. At uh, Unga Farm Care, we have a Fugo brand of feeds known as Fugo Advanced Broiler Feeds. These are this stage diet that is fed from day one up to day 35. Uh, this stage, this feed, as I said, is divided into a starter feed, a grower feed, and a finisher feed. All of it is pelleted. The Fugo advanced starter crumbs, they are fed from the first day up to the 10th day. And this chick is supposed to feed an average of 300 grams for that entire period. From then on, that's when we transition to the Fugo grower advanced pellets, which are designed for proper frame development to ensure that that chicken, once it is finishing up, it has proper frame and bone development to be able to hold on to the weight. This feed is uh, fed on an average of 1.2 kilos per chicken for the period of uh, 10 or so days from the 11th day to 24th day. Now from the 25th day is when the farmer transitions to the Fugo Advanced Finisher Pellets. These are the finisher diets that are designed for proper weight gain of that chicken to be able to hit weights of around 1.8, 1.9 to almost 2 kg within the 35 days. That is live weight. This feed is fed on an average of 1.7 kilos per chick from the day from day 25 up to 35 days. That is the time that the farmer is going to slaughter the chicken. Proper feeding of layers. Uh, the main objective is to bring up the chick to hit the point of lay at the right time and to be able to achieve the maximum lay within the period that the chick stays at your farm. At Unga Farm Care, we have Fugo layer feeds, which are divided also in three stages. We have the Fugo chick and duckling mash that is fed from the time the chick lands in your farm from day one up to the time it's going to hit eight weeks. That is, um, you feed that chick on an average the whole period, the entirety of that period, that chick is supposed to take 2 kg of this fugo chick and duckling mash. This feed is meant to prevent diseases occurrence when that chick lands at the farm, to promote fast growth, proper frame development, to be able to transition to the grower stage, that is the pullet stage. Now the pullet stage is uh, where the farmer feeds the fugo grower's mash. This fugo grower's mash is the one that leads the chicken to attain the weight because a chicken is supposed to attain a weight of one and a half kilos by the time it is laying and mostly this is at 18 weeks uh, this is fed on an average of seven kilos for the period of uh, from eight weeks up to 18 weeks when the chicken is going to start to lay but a disclaimer here is that the farmer is supposed to feed the fugo growers mash until the chicken lays five percent of the expected lay and then from there it's when the farmer transitions into the fugo layers complete meal this fugo layers complete meal is fed to the chicken now that is laying and it's fed through the entire period up to the time that the farmer is going to uh, cull off that flock after reaching its optimum production period proper feeding of a kenyaji bird also it's done at unga farm care we insist on doing the three phase kind of feeding uh, because the chick has different requirements at different stages of growth. So at Unga Farm Care, we have Fugo Kenyeji Chick Mash. This Fugo Kenyeji Chick Mash, is, it's fed the same way as a layer chick from the first day up to eight weeks, and you feed on an average of two kilos per day. From there, you transition to Fugo Growers Mash, which is also fed to the growing pullet of the growing Kenyeji bird up to the time that you're either going to sell it off for meat or you're going to transition into egg production. As I said, this Kenyaji can either be uh, native or the improved ones, but most people are doing for uh, the meat. If you're doing for the meat, you do the fugo growers mash up to the time that these birds are going to attain uh, the right weight for slaughter. But if you're going to transition to the egg production, 
you go and transition at around four and a half months to five months, that's when you transition to Fogo layers mash. That you feed daily at a ration will be over 100 grams or 140 grams, depending whether you're supplementing the Kenyan with other, the other feeds or it is scavenging outside. How we treat the pottery's water depends mostly with the source of the water that you're giving your chicken. Uh, you find mostly the city farmers, the water they're having is treated already. But uh, in most occurrences, the farmers who do it in the rural area is either from a borehole or from a river. Uh, the water has some agents uh, that occur naturally within the environment that need to be catered for. Because if they are fed to the chicken, they're going to be a bit harmful or they're disease causing agents. So the water, first of all, for proper functioning in a chicken has to be clean, uh, it has to be potable water, and also it has to have something we call the right pH or the right acidity levels. Uh, for a chicken digestion to work very well, you have to have water with a low pH because the digestive bacteria that work very well in the chicken's digestive system, they work at a lower pH. That's why at Unga Farm Care we have a product that you add onto the water. Uh, it's called Celco pH. This echo pH is an acidifier. Uh, this acidifier lowers the pH of the water and makes it more, more efficient in terms of uh, helping the metabolism of that chicken because the pH of the water is going to go lower and the bacteria that break down the feed for it to be utilized for conversion works very well at a low pH. Uh, the common diseases that affect portly uh, in the period of rearing uh, they vary, but we start with the most common ones is a respiratory diseases. These can be caused by uh, viral agents, uh, thus by things like Newcastle, which we mitigate by doing proper vaccinations and observing proper protocols. Uh, respiratory diseases can also come from a poor management of the poultry unit. When the farmer keeps dusty litter or the house is not very clean, it can lead to diseases like um, CRD and also uh, the way the farmer manages the ventilation also is a factor because when the litter is not managed well and the house is very clogged, you find the house having a lot of ammonia which compromises the, the respiratory system of the bird. The second one is the digestive system, uh, is the one that is affected mostly by disease occurring, uh, disease causing agents. Uh, that is if you have no proper equipment or the feed is not clean or you have contaminated feed that's when you have issues of the chicken diarrhea or the chicken not being able to absorb the feed that you're giving and converting to whatever that the farmer is anticipating from the enterprise uh, the third disease uh, that occurrence of diseases occurs mostly due to managmental factors uh, that is if the farmer has proper spacing in the house the litter management and uh, as I said ventilation you find the animals have compromised uh, locomotion or um, they have compromised abnormalities that occurs mostly as a result of uh, poor management. The requirement for a good poultry house is uh, the first thing the ventilation. Uh, the chicken needs to stay in a house that has a free flow of air. Uh, it can either have two models, an open ventilated house where there is flowing naturally, or we can have environment controlled housing where you have vacuum kind of uh, mechanized way of aerating the house. Uh, the second requirement is uh, the litter where the chicken steps on. It has to be in adequate depth, depth that is uh, between three to four inches. That's what keeps the chicken house dry and prevents any occurrences of diseases or uh, uncomfortability of the chicken. Uh, the third thing is uh, biosecurity, where the house is located. It has to be located in seclusion, where you're not having interferences of uh, people walking in, birds coming in, or any other vector of a disease-causing agent. Uh, the fourth one is the orientation of the house. Uh, the house has to be in an east-west direction in a way that direct sunlight is not entering into the house because it affects the way the chicken feeds and how the chicken behaves. Uh, the last one is uh, uh, proper equipment and spacing.
uh, you have to have the right number of uh, feeders, drinkers, and also the right space within that house for proper, proper functioning of the unit.